Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now it is a wonderful December morning and we have come out to an area of reef. I'm going to be fishing along an area of reef today with lures and live baits, hopefully to catch anything. Cod, pollock, bass, wrasse, anything we can find, just for the fun of it. Now it is not hard to see in a morning like this why I love being out at this time of day. Oh. What I'm hoping to do here is I've got some sabikis on and I'm hoping to pick up mackerel, pilchards, scat. Oh, it's dropped off. Felt like a ras. We're after mackerel, pilchards, sand eels, scad, anything like that to use as a live bait. Because I'm going to be fishing lures and live baits today. to the bottom. With the lures I'm going to be fishing either slow jigs or soft plastics. Slow jigs I'll be fishing them just straight on the bottom and soft plastics cast them away a little bit and just like sink and draw back because you're going to be fishing them near to the bottom because that's where the cod live. We have got a little bit left of the flood and then we'll have slack water and I'm going to fish all of the ebb. So hopefully we'll be able to show you a few fish. First fish, little ballon ras. First things first is I'm going to try and get some bait, try and get some live bait. Mackerel, pilchards, sand eels, anything like that. I'm just fishing with a set of sabikis down on the bottom. Little female cuckoo ras. Just drifted off the edge of the reef. I think we'll go around and try that again. Just, just got it in the boat. That's one live bait. Feel better now that I've got a live bait. And the bait fish have been very thin on the ground lately. Well, ideally I would like half a dozen but one will get us started got some dolphins around it's a better sign isn't it they always brighten your day up don't they seeing dolphins that was a tuna <laughs> yeah that was a bluefin tuna I think I'll hang on a minute before I put that live bait out don't really fancy being smashed up by one of them big things this soft plastic lure just really isn't doing it for me today I'll put a slow jig on Ah, them tuna, <laughs> them tuna are somewhere else. 
I could have my work cut out for me trying to land one on one of these gears. On a bit of this gear. It's not a monster, but target species. Taken on a 60 gram slow jig. Nice little cuddling. See look there where these cyst hooks have taken it. Not a bad start. Whoop, 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 easy tiger. Yeah. Not a bad start. I think I've foul hooked a rast this time. These slow jigs, they work in such a way that they flutter. You lift it up and then as you drop, it flutters down. And it must mimic like a wounded fish or something because it just triggers fish on to bite it I don't know if it's a territorial thing with wrasse I mean, some of the big ballon wrasse they'll strike it to eat it but a little, a little cuckoo wrasse like that or maybe just striking it to try and get it out of their territory but yeah everything bass, pollock, cod, wrasse they all, all strike slow jigs people have been asking me a few times to explain them and I, I don't really fish them, fish them properly. I only fish them when the conditions are right. And when it, the water's slack like this, because we've still got slack water, there's not an awful lot of drift. Even though we're now in 90 feet of water, I'm only fishing a 60 gram slow jig. When the tide picks up a little bit more, I'll switch back over to a soft plastic. Currently drifting at 0 0.1 knots, so we're barely moving. Don't know if you can see the float in the background there. If you see a bite, let me know. I'm going to call this and say Ballon Ras. <coughs> oh no! <coughs> <coughs> that is a lovely male cuckoo ras. The one that we caught earlier, the peachy coloured one, was a female, this one is a male. You can tell the difference straight away, can't you? A lovely looking fish. Got some teeth on him. On you go. This is all my live bait rig is. Is I literally, I have one of my big floats, this is a 140 gram float with a locked in lead of about this might be two or three ounces and then three or four feet of fluoro ending in a 10 oh chinner with a live mackerel on okay. and we'll just let that run out behind the boat when it gets to a certain distance I'll put the bail arm on, stop it going out, and we'll just drift with us. But that is the one that I am... I'm hoping for bass or pollock with. Sorry if it looks like I'm squinting, but I've positioned the boat so that the sun's right behind the camera, so it's not looking at you. And I'm having to look straight into the sun. <laughs> Right, doesn't always happen like that. 
See there how I dropped straight down into a snag and all I did was I backed the boat up so that if the snag pulled in that way I'm pulling it back out right if I'm drifting this way and my snag has gone in that way by reversing the boat I can pull the snag back out doesn't always work but sometimes it does this time it did Just by using a little bit of patience. There's a lot of birds working there underneath the cliff. If they're still there when we finish this drift, I might go down and see what that's all about. See if we can't pick up a few more live baits. Lot's gone down. All that happened there was I just saw the float go into the water. <laughs> oh, last dash for freedom there. Stick my finger up with his spikes. Well, that's a nice one. And there's the bait it caught on. As it is, we're currently in a bass ban, as in it's illegal to land bass. So we're going to revive this guy and return him. Drip me tweezers out and unhook him. When you get a fish that is hooked deep, this one was hooked just in the roof of its mouth, just before its stomach. If you go in by the gill like that, you can turn the hook and push it out like that. So instead of going in the traditional way, of going into its mouth like that you go in through the gill and if you're careful just push it out like that I love you bass so just let him recover in that tub there and then we'll get him back that was all the rig was a little locked in lead and Tenno Chino. Now this mackerel, this mackerel is no longer a live bait. A dead bait will fish but it won't fish as well as a live bait. Just pass the hook through like that and away you go. That would have been a fine table fish about a week ago. Need to try and get myself some more live baits now. Let go of my thumb. Drift started to pick up a little bit. So we are moving a little bit faster. Boat's gone down and come back up again. Look, float went right under. Missed that one, then turn it camera on. We'll see, it might come back. 
There's a nice little pollock. I've come in here to try and find out what all the birds are after. In the hope that I can find some small mackerel, some small pilchards, any type of little live bait. And all I was doing was just a simple cast and retrieve with this. Tell you what, it's a nice one, but it's too small. Lovely little codling. Got some stunning colours on them. Look at the size of that mouth as well. Yeah, this boy, you can tell it's a member of the cod family by this bib. But this one is too small. Oh. Put it out. That's what he's been eating, look, it's full of crabs. This guy is probably bang on legal size, but he's too small. Too small for me. Do we find in his great great granddad? Well, that bass spiked me up earlier on, it's really hurting now. Right, the float keeps bobbing and going around. Now, what I've done is I've put a mackerel strip on it. Oh, I don't know if I've got what it is, it might be even be a squid. Yeah, look. I caught a mackerel and it was too big, it was, it was a good size one, so all I've done was I just cut a strip of belly, like that, and something keeps hitting it, I don't know what it is. There is a lot of feed underneath the boat, I just can't seem to find it. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Check that. A perfect size live bait. I'll keep that strip bait out there. That was another weird one. All that happened was the float bobbed a bit, then lifted, and then went under. It's twice that's happened now. Yes. I'm thinking RAS for this though. Dirty, dirty brown ballon wrath. Keep an eye on that float. But it is weird how it's kept doing it. This is what keeps happening to my live baits. <laughs> Just nothing I can do with it. Ah well, that's fishing.
It's a porgy! Yeah, look. Poor beagle shark. Yeah, that was what it was. A little trembling bite as it found it. You can feel on here as well where it's all, where there's some like abrasion marks on the line. Yeah, straight cut. Not gonna have much joy if he's gonna hang around. Odds are stacked against us today. That's my last live bait. Right, well we're bitten off again by that. <clears throat> I'm assuming it must be a poor beagle shark. Lost three baits to it, I got bitten off, fished again, hooked into a fish, got bitten off again, but on the jig this time. Hooked into what I'm assuming was a little pollock or something. Could have been a little codling. Add it up four or five wines off the bottom and then the rod just arched over. So all we've got there is Poor beagle sharks do take up residence on a reef. All we've done there is we've found a resident poor beagle shark. So I've moved off about maybe 200 yards to try and get away from it. We've just got the last of the tide. You can see that the wind's starting to pick up a little bit and cause a bit of rippling. Pretty soon we'll have wind against tide. That might stop us. But I'm fishing a new jig on here and I'm fishing a dead bait out on a float. We're now currently in 85 feet. Now cod, nine times out of ten you have to be right on the bottom to get them. Occasionally they will move up in the water. I have even had them catch I have even caught them on float before. But generally you'll catch them right on the bottom. So these slow jigs or fishing like a lead head lure like this works well. All I'm doing is I'm just fishing it near to the bottom. We've got a massive mouth, so generally don't worry about having a big hook or a big lure. We might, we might, if this weather stays nice, the next day or two we might come back here and try and fish with some bait, try and catch some cod. Oh, missed it. What a lot of wrasse. That must have had 15. 15 cuckoos and ballons. Everybody has their favourite colour lure. Some people like yellow and red, some people like blue. It all just depends on what the fish are wanting on the day. Nice chunky ballon for the jig. That's what it was. You never, never in all this world. A pouting on the float. The size of that pouting, look, just a strip of mackerel belly. Well, that's a first for me. And that is a big pouting as well, look. How? <laughs> Stop it. Got some lovely colours on it, isn't it? Yeah, a pouting on the float. Come well, on, you should be able to get back down, you're only in shallow water. There we go. Good lad. Yeah, 45 feet of water. <laughs> Just one of them days. I was sure with the way that that was nodding that was going to be a cod. Right, we'll try one last drift and then we'll make tracks. But yeah, all I've done there 
is it's just a little strip of mackerel belly and I've just threaded the hook a couple of times now this is this is 40 pound mono of course I kept getting bitten off by that shark I thought this is the heaviest stuff I have on board I guess that's a lesson learned in itself isn't it I think what I'm going to do from now on is I'm going to keep a shark trace on the boat at all times. Let's loop round and have another go. <laughs> Thought it felt heavy. And it's released. <laughs> Big ball and rust. Got some dolphins and porpoises again. That's been a lovely calm day. I'm really glad I made the effort. Well, we've come to the end of the session. I'm going to carry on this drift for maybe another 15 minutes. Oh no, I don't tell me I've just dropped straight into a snap. I thought I'd just drop straight into it. No, we'd, uh, we've had a fantastic day today. Came out early doors and it was cold. Frost all over the boat this morning. And now look at it, it's like a summer's day. We're, we came out targeting cod and pollock. And we've caught both cod and pollock. So I consider that being a success. We have a fantastic eating fish that I've got down there in a the bucket. And um, I'm going to fill it that off in a minute. I'm not going to show you the filleting because I can't show you the angle right but what I am going to do is I'll tag in my fish filleting video here and I'll put it into the description. Now the lures we've been fishing today we've been fishing soft plastics which is just like Savage Gear eels or Sidewinders. We've caught both Pollock and Rass on these and um, caught my codlings all on jigs actually now I thought about it. We did have a bit of trouble with the float. And that our resident poor beagle, we managed to find him and he just followed me around. Lost three fish to him. Lost one on a jig, so I've lost a fish on a jig. And he kept taking me live bait. And then when I did hook him and I managed to get hook bent into him, I don't know if it'll show in the video because I had him on for about 10 seconds and then just cut me off. And then when I got the leader up and I put the hook length, it was all the hook the hook length was all rubbed up or it rubbed in the skin and it was just cut through. It's only 25 pound fluoro, what are you gonna do with that? Um, it's maybe taught me a lesson and I think I might keep a shark trace on the boat at all times, just in case. There's not much you can do there. I'm really struggling with this jig now. You see there all I did? I'll show you that real quick. That might, might help you out. Is this jig, these assist hooks. You see, they're on like, well, they're on these little tandem rigs. If this gets caught into the bottom, if one of these gets hooked up, what you can sometimes do is by by jigging the tip, what happens is whatever these are stuck into, this weight bounces around and pulls them out. There you see. That's why I don't hook up into that link, hook up into that one. By flicking it about a bit, you use the weight of the jig to bounce the hooks out. If the jig's stuck in a crevice, you're in trouble. Yeah. Quite often it works. Bait fish was hard to find, but we did find some. Um, yeah, loads and loads of dolphins and poppers. Did see some tuna earlier on as well, which was uh, always exciting to see. If I catch any more fish, I will put them in. If I don't, then I won't. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed joining me and we'll see you later. What a way to end the day. <laughs>